Hey everybody, welcome back to the Influencer Secrets Podcast. If you don't know who we are, my name is Doug, and this is my wife and business partner, Haley. Um, So today we want to talk about imposter syndrome. Find that it's literally an illness, not literally, but it's almost (laughs) like an illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's really there. But so today we wanted to basically just share like our history, the stuff that we've ran ran into with imposter syndrome and how we've tried to overcome it, but how honestly, like it'll probably never go away as long as you're progressing. I don't know about you guys, and I know we're going to get deep real quick here. But the majority, I wouldn't say the majority, but I, maybe it is the majority of people I come across. What, Doug? I'm just waiting to see where this goes. I know, you don't know. <laughs> the majority of people I feel like I come across, they're unhappy. And I'm not going to say like they're not going to agree with me because a lot of people don't like their jobs. I'm not saying that they don't like their relationships or their kids or anything. It's not that. It's really just that they're unhappy with the way life has, you know, just come at them. You know, Mm -hmm. that's why you see so many people in like having midlife crises or people that are 50 or six years old that are just unfulfilled and they're just like a hamster on a wheel. All because they stay in their comfort zone. Yes. And so the reason why, yeah, I was going to make that whole circle. Don't worry. But the reason why I feel like people do that after studying so much about the brain, reading books, about self-development, whatever you want to call it, is because the brain wants to keep you safe. You Mm -hmm. know, that's like Mm -hmm. that herd mentality. Well, basically what Haley's trying to say here is is that the brain is hardwired so that you live, so that you... I had to say it on here, but procreate, so that way you extend your your lineage, so that way your species carries on, and your brain is meant to keep you safe. Yes. But in today's world, when we're not fighting animals or we're not trying to fight, you know, fight off, you know, or, you know, hunt for our food or things like that, you have to really combat that, that, uh, that safety mechanism that's built into your brain. So you can grow, so you can do bigger things. So you can evolve in a way. And this is like such a novel idea. And also I feel like it's really a simple thing. It's like, you know, get out of your comfort zone is like the phrase of that's a plaster on people's walls and stuff, you know, but really, if you don't understand why you are sometimes in that like fight or flight mode or Mm -hmm. that, that, that twitch reaction to feel like an intense amount of fear Mm -hmm. of feeling like you're so scared and you start to think I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. You start to think it's true. Yes. And if you, if you listen to that, like, you know, hardwired, whatever I'm trying to say, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that instinct really of you to run away from things that are unknown to you, then you're not going to progress in life. And I know we're getting weird here and like biology based, but if you don't understand like that, your brain, it's not trying to pit against you, Mm -hmm. but it's just trying to keep you uber safe doing the same things over and over and over. And you have to fight against that instinct to do the same things if you want to do something different with your life. Yeah. So when that happens, there are a lot of like common phrases that people say to themselves or that your brain says to you, your subconscious or whatever says to you. And that's how you start to recognize you're getting imposter syndrome it's things like you know can i really do this will people believe me um you know am i good enough to do this will people buy this thing well you know do i look like a fake do i know more than this person you start questioning yourself a lot and it's not questioning based on like decisions or data or like you know hard facts it's questions based on emotion yeah and that's when like the imposter syndrome and that safety switch is starting to kick in is you start having all these like emotional questions. Yeah. And I honestly find that the people that get over this are obviously duh, the ones that succeed. Um, they get over the fear of failure and the fear that they're going to be exiled from society. You know, all the mm-hmm. things, the fear mm-hmm. that their family's going to laugh at them or the fear that they're going to get someone telling them that they suck. Like those are all just emotional fears. Like mm-hmm. nothing literally is going to happen to you. If you show up on social media, obviously this is a social media based podcast, yeah. but if you show up on stories and your grandma or your aunt is like, wow, what do you, who look at you? Like, you know, you're going to get someone like that. I have look at you, you know, you haven't been doing this that long. Like I'm surprised. And then you start to think imposter thoughts, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, nothing literally is going to happen to your life. You're just going to feel bad for a second. Literally like in danger of being eaten by a lion or something. And so a lot of, not a lot, but there have, obviously we work with like a ton of people and we have worked with a ton of students in the past. And again, like it's never the technical issues they run across. It's Mm -hmm. like Haley, Doug, I just don't think I'm good enough. Like, who am I? I am, I'm like swindling people because I'm not that good to charge. Mm -hmm. And they start to feel those things. But like, again, you have to not listen to that fear part of your brain. Yeah. And so like for me, for instance, my imposter syndrome really kicks in in two places. One is on social media, kind of like with everybody else. But then the second one is when I used to do sales calls. So I used to in the beginning, in the beginning, I had a really bad imposter syndrome. I used to be like, can I even sell? Like, why would people believe me in what I'm saying? I can't do this. This isn't what I want to do. And I ended up 
closing like nearly 600k in like high ticket sales in just under nine months yeah and so but it's because we the other thing about that is when you have no choice but to just suck it up and face your imposter syndrome we had no choice yeah we had no choice because we committed to this path Mm -hmm. last year and we talked about this and i think two podcast episodes ago but we put ourselves in that situation honestly it's funny that it's not funny but we keep and i think this is like um not to pat ourselves on the back because we've gone through crazy like bouts of Mm -hmm. failure and all the things Mm -hmm. we don't talk about really maybe we will eventually but you know that's a good marker i think of someone that is a a well-equipped entrepreneur whatever you want to say someone that's not going to quit and give up is that they put themselves purposefully in places of um like discomfort and discomfort and like yeah it's like how much can you live with discomfort and yeah 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 yeah. so like a while ago when we made this transition to courses we had to purposely cut off brand deals because that put you in a place of discomfort to kick in your like survival mechanism to try to get past your imposter syndrome of being a coach and selling courses. So that was like, you know, if we, Haley probably had those thoughts. I'm just putting thoughts into her mouth now, but it's like, you know, not knowing if she could sell a YouTube course back in the day or like there's other people that are so good. Like there's like channels with hundreds of thousands of subscribers that have courses. Like why would they ever listen to me? And it was like a super successful course. Oh yeah. I was like straight up. I, I mean, I wouldn't say depressed. Honestly, I don't know. I was never certified. Like I'm de- Haley's depressed as a therapist mm-hmm. or something, a doctor. But when I was trying to get out of brand deals, I thought no, I'm not worthy for anything, which is yeah. stupid. Cause I was doing this for a living like YouTube, but yeah. I definitely had about, I also just had a, my second baby. So oh, yeah. I think it was like, str- like hormonal crazy times, but I definitely was depressed, anxious, depressed, anxious, like in telling Doug, I cannot do this. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what are we going to do? And he's like, we will do this. Like, obviously we yeah. were not going to go back to an eight to five. And I did not want to be like having to put my family online to make money. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole here, but I had like crazy imposter syndrome. Yeah. Like there were YouTube channels like Graham Stefan. Okay. He's got like millions of followers. I don't even know if he was selling a YouTube course. I don't, I didn't look it up honestly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he does now. Like why would anyone buy mine? It's cause they want to learn from someone in my situation. Yeah. You know, they yeah. don't want to learn from some bachelor guy, you know? So yep. anyways, yeah, we all have it and I have it every day. Like honestly, Yeah. And so imposter syndrome at the end of the day is going to prevent you from progressing and prevent you from making money. Yeah. And like, that's really the big deal. So like when Haley was able to get over that imposter syndrome and sell that YouTube program, like it made us money and then we were able to evolve. And then like after the fact, yeah, you're able to be like, Oh, look, it was just imposter syndrome, but it's hard to recognize. Yeah. You think it's reality. Yeah. Like you think that, you know, you don't, you don't look at it as like, Oh, this is just how my brain is hardwired and you're trying to fight against yourself and it's crazy. You just think, Oh, I literally just suck, you know, or something. Yeah. yeah. So we've talked a lot about like what imposter syndrome does or how to recognize it, but why don't we talk a little bit about like how to get out of it or how to prevent it from happening? Um, one of the things that I like to do personally, other than like just doing it, which I think Haley is probably one of her tips is just, just do it. Um, I personally like to talk about it. I like to talk it over here from a third party, like third party stories or third party people talking, you know, looking at things from an outsider's perspective is what's really going to clear your head because you have an idea of what you look like. You have an idea of who you are and what you've done and what your appearance is and what people think of you. Okay. But when you get somebody like, like if you have a friend that's in the industry, not just a random friend, okay, not your mom, that's different. But when you have, or even if you don't have a friend in the industry, if you get a mentor, like that's one of the things that helped with us was getting mentors and them, like we found they're just regular people. Yeah. 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 Men- yeah. Mentors are regular people. And when you get a mentor, they look at you as somebody that doesn't know you. So like, that's literally how you're, how you appear to other people. So when they validate either that you are not an imposter or you are an imposter, and that could happen sometimes too. Um, it at least it clears up the imposter syndrome. So one of the things I like to recommend to people is have a mentor, have somebody, a third party, like a, like a, a what's the word I'm thinking for? Like an unbiased opinion from people, you know? So that's, that's one of the first things that I like to do. Yeah. And then something, I mean, yes, if someone like looks at you and they're like, what is wrong? Like this has happened to us so many times. I can't tell you over like two years, we started paying for mentors because we never paid for anyone to yeah. help us before. Yeah. But once we started learning from people and them telling us, like we tell them our problem, they're like, mm-hmm. that's not a problem. Mm-hmm. You're dumb. Just keep doing it. And we're yeah. like, okay. Yeah. It's not like six months of us sitting around feeling like, whoa, is me. Yeah. I don't know what yeah, to yeah. do. It's Definitely. like, they just rip off. They, we just follow them honestly blindly mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. we get the success they had because they did it yep. so there's that um but if you don't want to pay for a mentor if you just want to figure things out like you should probably do that anyways obviously you shouldn't rely on someone else to get you there because that mm-hmm. won't really help mm-hmm. um but i think like for me 
I think for Doug too, but like through me and like the things that I've been learning, I tell Doug when, cause he doesn't have all the time to read books. Like I do <laughs> when the baby naps and stuff, he's like implementing things. But I think you have to, um, really look at the people in your life. And if you are mimic or if you're trying to like model their behavior, so let's say you surround, like, you know, the famous phrase, you are the average of the five closest people to you. So list of those five people, if they have habits of quitting things, of being scared of living the same life that you don't want to live and you start to see, Oh, I'm about to quit this. Cause I feel like I'm not worthy. You are just those five people, you know? So if you want to live drastically different, if you want to have a side hustle that is thriving or whatever, better relationships, health, you you can't model the behavior of the people that you're constantly surrounded with. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is you probably just have to inundate like the inputs that you have with new inputs. So what I mean by that is if you are on social media, which I mean, we all are like, let's be honest. I don't know. Actually, I know one person that doesn't have yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And my dad actually is that one person, but anyways, which he's amazing for, but basically if you are looking at social media and you see all the people in your feed, the top 20 people that just show up constantly, you know, in stories every day. And they're again, like not doing anything different or you don't really know how they're doing things. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. you need to change those inputs. So what we have done is now instead of looking at social media and just being entertained, we, ha we learn about the brain. I know it's not exciting, but I wouldn't say go to the self-help section. I mean, actually I'll list some books down below that are, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but that are absolutely life-changing that start to take out like emotions. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to make mm -hmm. emotional based decisions for the rest of your life, or you're going to be living the same day, yeah. you know, yeah. every so, day there's a new book on our doorstep. Yes. Something you need to through. be like, what do I, I mean, you need to be educating yourself on mm -hmm. how to not be emotional. You know, yeah. I know that's kind of strange, yeah. but it's true. You know, yeah, yeah, you definitely have to do that. Something that's helped me to be able to do that, to kind of like put things into perspective is to actually sit there and think about like where we are or where I am in the grand scheme of things when it comes to either like business yes. or, the oh world my gosh, yes. or something like that. Okay. When you start to get imposter syndrome and you're like, Oh, like what will people think of me? Or are they, no am I really going to be worthy? Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about what you're doing. You know, it's like, you're such a small kind of piece of the world that's out there. And realistically, like to, to bring it more to, from away from like universe terms to like business terms, depending upon your niche, you only need a small slice of the pie. Yeah, like you don't need to dominate the entire. I know because people will like compare themselves to like someone with millions of followers and like millions of sales or whatever you you know whatever. Yeah. yeah. But it's like who cares about them? You just want like some. Most people just want to make like ten k a month. I know, and so like I don't need to make two million dollars a month. You know, yeah. somebody's making two million dollars a month. Someone's already doing it. That's They're a better. Good sign. Well, I know. good. I know. You know, like like it's just like we know one of our friends was like, oh, I, I we recommended them do like a YouTube channel. And he was like, oh, there's already like three people doing this. Oh, there's more like, than three. <laughs> three? There's yeah. only three? Like, there's that's not. All, that's there's not. Point. But like, even if there was 3,000, it yeah. doesn't matter because no. you just need to, you know, have a little slice like Doug yep. said of the just pie. Just a little piece yeah. of the pie. And so like having that also helps me reframe in my, in my mind, like, oh, I don't need to be the best. People don't need to see me as the best. I just need to have a piece of this. Yeah. And I think another thing is people assume, like Doug said, you have to know everything in your mm -hmm. niche. Like mm -hmm. you have to know everything about everything in order to feel or to look credible to people and to be credible. But you can just, like we've said in other older podcasts, you can just teach someone how to get from A to B. Yep. You know, so yep. you and don't then need you're to at know. step C and then you, you, know? you just naturally yeah. learn as you teach people. Yep. It's amazing. So, I mean, what happens after you get over imposter syndrome? Well, you never get over it. You just know what like happens stuff after it you, down. I'll say, I'll say this. <laughs> what happens after you get over that bout of imposter syndrome? Um, you progress. And that's like the whole point. Like you have to get over that safety or the you know, safety mechanism of imposter syndrome. You get over it. Then you keep climbing. And then at some point you're going to hit it again. Yeah. Like every time you try to evolve, it happens again. But honestly, like if you're able to start recognizing imposter syndrome, you can read about it. Like Haley said, train yourself on it. Like, you know, study it, understand the brain. You can start to understand when it starts coming. So like we know when imposter syndrome is coming and sometimes we'll catch ourselves at night or, you know, just sitting there talk, doing our business talks because that's the only time when all the kids are asleep and we're sitting there and we're like, is this a real issue or is this just imposter syndrome? Is this in our heads? Like, what I is think this? like, okay, so I don't use the word imposter syndrome without mm -hmm. going down like yet mm -hmm. another thing, mm -hmm. but I don't use the word. Oh, maybe I just have imposter syndrome. It's like, I know I do. It's yeah. really like, is this just a belief? I think we talked mm -hmm. about this in the last mm -hmm. episode, but it never gets old. It's like something I think about all the time. If yeah. I have a worry or concern or Doug too, we're like, is this a belief or is this like based in reality? Like, is this just yeah. something that we made up in our heads? Like, 
are we worrying about something that's not even an issue that mm-hmm. happens so much with yeah. us and our students it's like so much anxiety oh but it's not even like it's not even coming yeah, it's to not fruition even an issue i mean that was something that i read like 20 years ago like when i was a kid I read that like 80% of the things that you worry about never come true. Dude, they never, like, come, they true. never come true. They yeah. never come true. So like, like so someone things. calling you out or, you know, someone not buying your thing or yeah. whatever that yeah, yeah. you. So I think the first thing that you can also do is if you feel these feelings like maybe I'm in the wrong niche, maybe I shouldn't sell something. Maybe I need to grow a huge audience mm-hmm. in order to feel worthy or whatever. Write down like what you're actually concerned with. Like, are you yeah. actually concerned with your family yeah. members? Cause a lot of times it's that like making fun of you. And then I do have like another really good question, a really good series of questions. So this is what I tell Doug and Doug tells me when we have like these bouts of anxiety, like most people Mm -hmm. is like, number one, ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen if like your worry every day. I know he's sick of it. Doug, they don't know us. I'm like, can I get that boba? And you're like, well, what's the worst that could happen (laughs) with that boba? I'm like, I get indigestion. Like, what do you you want? (laughs) You know. Okay. The first question or no, first thing. So write down what you're actually worried, like dig deep. You know, I don't journal, but this is what I would write down if I did. It's like, what are you worried about? Like literally don't be like, oh, people are going to think I'm a fraud. Well, maybe that is it. But literally like, what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. So number one, what are you worried about? Number two, if that thing actually happened if yeah. your grandma just came out of the woodworks is like you're a yeah. scammer like, i don't know a loser what? yeah grandma <laughs> just came. no if like someone on the internet called you out because people were like i don't want to start that because the trolls i'm like the mm-hmm. trolls aren't gonna get you till you're at like a hundred thousand subs yeah. like i'm not even kidding yeah. so what are you worried about and then number two mm-hmm. what is the worst thing that could happen if that actually like came to fruition yeah most of the time Haley's like well what's the worst thing that can happen are you gonna die and i was like no 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 i'm gonna die, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not gonna die. And and then, like are we gonna go poor and i'm like that no. no yeah and so the like, third well, thing yeah the third thing is if the worst did happen um would that like take you out forever and if mm-hmm. if the answer is no then just do it people just find reasons to be anxious because they're yeah. going against the grain yeah like it's gonna be you have to just live with discomfort if you want to change your mm-hmm. life you know mm-hmm. not to get like all i was gonna say dave ramsey but i meant <laughs> tony mm-hmm. robbins actually him too but you know <laughs> like I don't know. You have to learn to be okay with discomfort. And most yeah. people like your circle of five, most likely mm-hmm. if you're, if you haven't done anything yet, mm-hmm. it's for that reason. Like they're not okay with discomfort. No, they're not. Any little bit of and discomfort it, it's gonna, emotionally. It's going to make you feel worse. Messes them up. Yes. Yeah. Like, like if your five are not in the area that you want to be going into, your discomfort will only be, or I guess like, you, yeah, it's only going to be magnified. And so like, it's only going to feel worse. You're going to go talk to your friends that like do nothing. And you're mm-hmm. going to be like, I want to do this, but I'm scared. They're like, like oh my it. God, that sounds terrible. Yeah, don't like, do that. Go, uh, That's why it's, you yeah. got to be mentally every day. I would probably recommend if you really struggle with imposter syndrome and thinking that like, if you've started and quit things like a million mm-hmm. times, mm-hmm. which I think we all have at some point in our life, most of us, not all of us. Or if you feel like you just can't get up the social media content, which I've mm-hmm. been there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, or for whatever reason, cause you're scared, then I would make it a habit to read every day for 30 minutes. That's like so simple, but it will absolutely change your life. So I'll link the books down below that I'm talking about. But if you're not a reader, like you can do audible Mm -hmm. or you can do podcasts, like Mm -hmm. listen to people that are easily overcoming this stuff. And you realize um, there's nothing really to be scared about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess like for me, the last thing that I want to leave you guys with is that you yourself are your biggest critic and like you live rent free in your own head to mess yourself up. Oh my gosh. Like, yes. All day, every day. Yes. And so like you can't, if you go like a couple hours without talking to anybody about something and you're just thinking about it in your head, it's like game over. Like you oh, can't, yeah. you can't let that yeah. happen. So get out there, talk to other people, you know, get mentors or like Haley said, listen to people, but talk to the right people. Okay. And just remember you yourself, you will question yourself the absolute most. Cause that's like, it's ingrained in your DNA. Yes. And I mean, I think the last, last thing I know, oh, Doug's last, always last like, what? Yeah. but I'm reading this book and I'll link it down below because I forgot the name, but basically it's the premise, which is, is really interesting. And I'm always trying to tell Doug about it, but clearly I'm like the bookworm, which I never was, but, um, it's basically about your thoughts and how your brain tries to make sense of things. And obviously, like we already said, tries to keep you safe, mm-hmm. but your thoughts, we assign meaning to them. So if we think in our head, like, oh, this is reality, like this is going to happen. Then we start to attach meaning, but you have, if you have a scary thought or if you have like a fear, you don't have to make that mean anything. 
Yep. You know, you don't yep. have to. So anyways, I'll link it down below. So interesting because then you are more in control of your destiny, your future. If you can understand how the brain works and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this on YouTube, do all the usual stuff, you know, like, like comment, whatever, subscribe. If you got only, if you guys want to. Um, and then also we have, you can leave a review on the podcast too, on Apple podcasts. Um, but was there any closing, closing, closing thoughts? Ailey? No, there could be, but I won't. There always keep it will, short today. Yeah, we'll keep it to the next episode of the yes. podcast. We're doing pretty good at this. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> all, well, right. all right. Bye we'll, guys. We'll see you guys next time.